for the wonderful uh, introduction and thank you very much for inviting me to be part of uh, this um, wonderful uh, event especially where you are recognizing the best startups in the biotech space uh, i started um, you know getting involved getting interested in the whole space of healthcare as well as in the space of biotech only from 2014 after i stepped down from infosys and the reason for me uh, there are two reasons one uh, i wanted to get involved in something which will not compete with infosys because you know my heart and soul is still with infosys more importantly my money is also with infosys i am a shareholder still uh, but uh, second you know if you go back to the beginning of computer science uh, it arose from our um, wonderment about how the brain works you know the genesis of uh, computing is uh, people wondering about the brain you know the the two uh, fundamental uh, theorems in uh, computer science one is the you know the whole binary algebra and second is the von neumann algorithm of stored programs both these people if you read their uh, biography you will find that uh, you know both you know von neumann said that the brain must have separate areas where uh, logic is stored and another area where data is stored and things like that and uh, george bull said that since we are logical beings brain must be working in binary both these things are wrong we know today but these two wrongs created a huge industry uh, in the world and changed our lives forever so i felt that we need to understand you know uh, brain much better understand how our human body works much better and 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 that's the reason why you know i uh, decided to get involved in healthcare as well as in biotech um, my uh, primary um, involvement is with the center for brain research at indian institute of science where um, you know they are looking at um, uh, understanding aging understanding how aging related neurological disorders happen uh, you know uh, diseases like alzheimer's parkinson's dementia and as you know uh the world still does not have a solution for uh, these um, uh, ailments um and i'll i'll come back to this uh, a little bit later uh and 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 that started my um, involvement here and and my headline message to you uh, if you take one message from my talk today that would be that we need to think big see i have experienced the growth of the it industry i am a product of the it industry i am a product of the digital computing revolution and i have seen how the industry has grown but more importantly how india's contribution has created what today is a 190 billion dollar industry 140 billion dollar of exports so my my headline message to you is we want to make the biotech industry in india 5% of india's gdp and 10% of india's exports in the next 10 years it's doable i have seen the momentum building up i have seen what happened during the covid you know uh, i think uh, um, you know uh, i think it's vishal who men mentioned this about uh, how during the covid times people came together industry academia uh, you know uh, government uh, you know scientists etc came together to address this gap that existed we were not making any ppes uh, you know the ventilators you know uh, the testing kits none of these things were made in india but very quickly we ramped up through collaborative effort uh and 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 we built these things now we are exporting these things as you know india is already the vaccine capital of the world 70% of the vaccines are manufactured here india is the generic capital of the world 
now we need to move into molecules we need to move into bio pharma products and things like that i'm extremely glad that um, you know uh, jc bio media bio pharma world chemtech are all coming together to um, you know to to have this um, event uh, over two days and, and and the participation is quite impressive and and um, and and you're also recognizing many startups here so um, the headline message is five percent of india's gdp and ten percent of india's exports must be our goal and i i, I believe that um, it is very much very much uh, doable if you all work together and and the other thing about uh, what happened during covid is everything got accelerated what could have taken probably five years got done in maybe five months right and and so why not we sustain this momentum why not we sustain this cooperation why not the regulator work with the industry and hand in hand you know we we actually address the issues together uh, because these are and 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 uh, dinesh uh, presented some of the uh, you know key points and uh, uday saxen also came, uh, presented some of the uh, important things a startup must look at and 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 this will only happen if we are together and as dinesh clearly mentioned you know from 2014 when the prime minister announced the startup india there has been a momentum to build up this uh, ecosystem and today we are the third largest ecosystem for startups in the world i want india to be the number one startup ecosystem in the biotech space in the world we have stiff competition but i think it's doable you know if we put our mind on something you know we will do it we may not get to first immediately but let us get to 3 2 1 right we we must uh, indeed do that there is a very important reason why india must do this okay it is not just for about india just look at what happened during covid you know the vaccines that came out first the pfizer vaccine uh, and the moderna vaccine using messenger rna technique fantastic science uh, absolutely fantastic science and never before in the history of the world a vaccine has been released within one year and now we have of course 10 different uh, uh, candidates now which are going through various trials some of course have been authorized for uh, uh, use and things like that emergency use and things like that. but the first two vaccines are expensive can't be used in india because of the logistical challenges so when the developed countries come out with a solution they don't think about affordability they don't think about usability they don't test these vaccines on um, you know subjects around the world majority of the world population whereas when india comes out with something it is affordable it has been tested with a broad diverse set of people and we can also manufacture at scale as we as we are demonstrating in the vaccine case so india has a very important role to play in making sure that uh, things are affordable healthcare is affordable medicines are affordable another example you know the breakthrough in the cancer therapy is what is, what is immunotherapy you know i i won't even dare to get into the details but all of you know the details of that one course of immunotherapy that is you know taking the person's immune cells reprogramming them injecting it back so this is personalized medicine at the highest level based on the tumor that they have developed is the cure right at the simple terms is 600000 one course and and you may have to go through multiple courses in order to make sure that the person is completely cured even the you know the richest country maybe one person of the people can afford it again i want to reiterate this point india has a very important role in healthcare to make sure that these cures are affordable and we have the right relevant solutions and most of these medicines are tested on 10% of the world's population never tested on the 90% of the world's population we are 20% of the world's population china is another 20% and and 
and and if the medicine is not tested and more and more we are realizing that every individual is different our genetic makeup is different why is the you know covid virus um, mutating because it's interacting with the host and it's mutating it has to change right as he as it as it uh, goes from one person to another person so more and more we are realizing that everybody is different and especially in healthcare and and again if we don't test these medicines in india in in china etc africa you know we are then blindly using something that has been tested on 10% of the world's population very very important role india has to play so i i have started with setting a goal i have clearly now articulated why india has a very important role to play here the next is do we have the talent and the people i have absolutely no doubt about this that we have the talent and the people because wherever you go in the world in the academic academia in industry in leadership positions in science you find indians and in india over the last 5 6 years i have actually met various research organizations i have met various uh, startups i have interacted with industry and i can honestly say that we are second to none in terms of our skill set our capabilities our talent we may need to of course scale this up we need to probably invest a lot in uh, physical infrastructure because that's very expensive so we need to invest heavily into physical infrastructure and things like that and here it's a joint effort between uh, industry government and the third arm of our third leg of this is philanthropy see typically around the world philanthropy funds or government funds basic research primarily so 70% of the funding comes from philanthropy or government in basic research 30% comes from industry whereas when you shift to applied research 30% comes from philanthropy and government and 70% comes from industry so industry tend to primarily fund applied research so that they can they can benefit from their investment also risk is reduced and and they and and they fund applied research basic research is funded by philanthropy and uh, government in india philanthropy um, funds education philanthropy funds charitable causes i think if we want to become a knowledge based economy if you want to become a a, a product economy uh, if you you know um, would they talked about the difference between it and uh, pharma the key difference is india is done extremely well in it services whereas in products we are just starting to do well uh, bio uh, pharma of course there is certain element of services in terms of um, you know clinical trials and things like that but it's primarily a product uh, driven business and we need to think about the the complete uh, you know uh, life cycle of um, how we look at um, product uh, you know starting with r and d um, then going through um, proof of concept then going through uh, clinical trials and then building a a, a company you know still setting up a startup and building a company and things like that so that that life cycle is very different the funding requirements are very different etc and again i want to congratulate all of you i want to congratulate um, you know vishal uh, about this um, uh, indian uh, healthcare angels uh, again you know uh, i've been shouting from uh, all the forums that um, you know one big challenge india is going to face india is already facing is that um, we don't have enough indian money coming into the startup ecosystem the entrepreneurial ecosystem every startup that goes to series c series d you know later stages when the risk is reduced is funded by money coming from outside the country 90% of the funding after series c is non indian it's not that india does not have the money there's tremendous amount of wealth is estimated that there is about 2 to 3 trillion dollars of wealth in indian um, indians hands of indians you know mostly in in families and industrialists and people like that uh, they need to put maybe 10% of that or 15% of that 
into the startup ecosystem. Otherwise, what will happen is all the risk is removed when they come to series C, series D, because you know the product is tested, the customer is validated, they have gained some momentum and things like that. Now they are looking to go big. They are trying to go global. Uh, they are looking at uh, exits. They are looking at IPO. And suddenly the company is owned by non-Indians. And they change the registered office also. Um, and, the, and the patent goes outside India. The ownership of the product, ownership of the brand, everything moves outside India. So it is important and I'm, I'm very glad that um, you know, you've, you've actually um, you know, created that. And I feel that um, you know, uh, 10 to 15% of the wealth uh, in India must be invested into entrepreneurial ecosystem, the startup ecosystem. And, and we need to choose sectors strategically. And the entire biotech sector is strategic because we can clearly replicate. So the target that I said right in the beginning is because I clearly believe that in the biotech space, India can be a global leader. India must be a global leader. So I talked about um, you know, the, the investments that are required. Uh, there are two things which I want to add to this investment. One is typically the lead times are much longer because we have to create a proof of concept. Typically grant funding supports that. Then you go through trials and then you know, the startup really takes off actually. Uh, and, and so if um, you know, a technology startup you know, in the IT area takes about eight to 10 years, typically, it will take about 10 to 15 years for a biotech startup to reach that same stage. So you need patient capital, you need long-term capital, uh, you need uh, to take high risk, um, high risk, higher risk, and you need some philanthropic funding to create proof of concepts and things like that, grants, etc. And I, again, I want to compliment um, Government of India because if you look at um, across the different um, startup initiatives in the government, uh, the one uh, from DBT stands out. Department of Biotechnology stands out. Birac stands out. Right. I've had an opportunity to, uh, you know, study a little bit um, about what they do, etc. And and again, you know, uh, I think, and it's a collaborative effort. And what I found very nice was that um, they work very closely with academia. They have several programs that support academic research. They have several programs that support incubators and accelerators. They have several uh, programs that supports uh, startups and things like that. They work with industry. And I'm very glad Dr. Dinesh Dua and today talked about uh, these bio parks, uh, which are going to be bio research parks and things like that, which are going to be launched. Because that, again, is part of building this ecosystem to create this uh, environment and things like that. Video? 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 Sorry for that. Now, there, there are a couple of other things that uh, we need to do in forums uh, such as this, actually. Uh, since this is an industry that has to go through trials, approvals, uh, regulatory um, approvals, and things like that, uh, on one side, we need to create uh, programs that educate entrepreneurs and support these startups through um, you know, the process of regulatory approval. And on the other side, we want to make sure that our regulators are collaborative with us because these, these areas are fast changing. And, and in COVID times, we have actually worked very closely with the regulators. And so, you know, let's replicate that. Let's work together. So the regulator cannot just say, no, not approved. They need to say why it's not approved. How can I get help you in get that approval. Okay, we need to have a Chinese wall, but at least you know, guide us with the right uh, direction or create separate entities that I can actually handhold you through the approval process, through the regulatory approval process and things like that. That enabling role somebody has to play uh, to make sure that um, you know, these approvals are, are, are possible, uh, etc. Um, I want to encourage 
large number of um, uh, students to take on uh, biotech as an area of uh, specialization, as an area of study and things like that. This is the most exciting time. There's a convergence that is happening with uh, digital technology. See, what is called fourth industrial revolution is nothing but biotech revolution to me. Because you are saying that you know, fourth industrial revolution is the, at the intersection of digital computing, uh, physical infrastructure, and biological living things. That's what biotech is all about, right? Uh, when you, when you, um, you know, uh, embed, um, you know, uh, sensors in the brain and can directly talk to the brain, it's biotech, right? When you understand the microbiome in your stomach and how it actually um, uh, communicates with uh, the brain, again, that's uh, biotech, right? That's the modern medicine uh, playing a role here. Um, and, 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 and our understanding of uh, uh, life, our understanding of human beings, our understanding of the brain, how our understanding of, uh, you know, all <clears throat> working together, um, you know, this whole space of uh, working uh, with physically challenged people, either mental or physical challenges and things like that, through the use of the modern uh, tools and technologies that we have. Again, uh, uh, that is biotech. So this is a very exciting field. This is a very new field. And we are not too much behind. We may be a little bit behind, but we are not too much behind. And we need so talent, more talent. Because if you want to build something that is you know, world-class and at, at scale, we need large number of people to enter this sector. And we also need to invest in the physical infrastructure. So these bio parks, et cetera, must have, um, you know, DNA, DNA sequencing equipment, you know, shared resources, um, you know, a, 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 a fMRA uh, capability and things like that. that can be used by the startups that can be used to train people, uh, you know, stem cell research, right? Uh, how, how do you, how do you do, um, you know, uh, how do you create an organoid uh, using stem cell capabilities and things like that. These are all parts of the modern medicine, actually. And, and, and these bioparks must have these capabilities as shared resources, such that the, uh, these high value investments are made together uh, as a consortium or from the government. So uh, DBT has sponsored a project uh, around Genome India we want to map 20,000 Indians uh, across the country. You know, for a country of our size, we don't have a, um, you know, DNA database of Indians of more than 1,000, you know. So we, we said, let's at least move towards creating 20,000. And uh, that, as part of that program, the government is funding about five DNA sequencing centers as common resources across the country in different labs and things like that. So these are models that we need to replicate and take forward. I want to conclude um, by um, also talking about one more thing that is very unique that India can contribute to the world. And it's our traditional medicine, our traditional uh, systems and things like that. Uh, and, and I'm talking about yoga, meditation, Ayurveda, uh, et cetera. See, we know that these things work. So the difference between the Western uh, medicine is that you the science goes from the lab to uh, the the individual the patient the uh, the the market so science goes from the lab to market our traditional medicine is actually it's going from the field to the lab now because we know it works it has worked for five thousand plus years we know that. Um, you know, uh, meditation calms the mind and, uh, and, and, and has a significant impact on uh, uh, the, the health of the individual and things like that. Similarly, yoga has a, a significant impact. You know that Ayurveda, you know, the whole concept of microbiome is what Ayurveda starts with, right? It, they say cleanse your stomach, rebuild your uh, microbiome. That's the fundamental principle of Ayurveda, actually. And we're going back to that. So we need to now take this from practice to the lab to understand why these things work 
and the reason for doing that is so that we can have replicable results the challenge with the uh, ayurveda yoga etc you know it works for one person may not exactly work the same with another person whereas if you take an aspirin we know exactly what happens right we when we do yoga yes we know somewhat what happens but the uh, the, the results are not exactly replicable maybe in in uh, in the modern medicine also there are, now we are realizing that there are differences because every human being is very different so uh, i reiterate that we need to think big we need to have ambitious goals i am very confident about people i am very confident about funding i am very confident about government support i am very confident about uh, us coming together and working collaboratively to achieve these goals i think india must do it because it's important for not just india for the entire world thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts and wish everybody all the best and all the winners congratulations and all the participants also congratulations because by participating um, you know you are going to become better i'm i'm confident about that and next year hopefully you know you will be the winner thank you very much everybody thank you